back, relax, maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hey guys, so I'm here today to do a book review of three recent books that I read and very much enjoyed and wanted to share with you. So I'll quickly tell you what they are. The first one is going to be Son of the Storm. Then I will talk about Rage of Dragons. And finally, I'll talk about Dreams of the Dying. So the first one I want to talk about is by Suyi Davis Ockenbauer. And this is Son of the Storm, which comes out in May this year from Orbit. It's, I believe, a debut. And the author themselves is actually Nigerian, I believe. And so there are a lot of West African kind of influences in this story, um, particularly things like Benin City, the old ancient Benin City and the Empire are kind of inspirations for the setting of this world and you can see very clearly in the landscape that this story is set in that it's very desert based it's very jungle based it is not at all western inspired and that's great fun um, I always love reading books that are not western inspired because it's very different very creative and very um, kind of unusual and fantastical and wonderful and great to experience um, influence from other cultures as well so I've really enjoyed kind of seeing that element of it in this book and I think you'll all agree that the cover is stunning and it really represents and encapsulates what this book kind of tries to do I think so yeah let's get into it um the book itself is about a couple of main characters we have three who are the more major characters but one of them is I would say the central character and that central character is called Danzo he's a young jolly initiate who is in training at the institute to kind of grow his standing and kind of learn and develop and he's one of the only people who is a believe a mixed race kind of initiate who has actually got into the institute and kind of made a life for himself. However he's very much looked down upon by people in the society because he has mixed race skin and in this world it's desirable to be darker skin and the darker your skin the more high class nobility you must be. Um, mid skin tone is very much frowned upon and then light skin tone is just not heard of in this world. It just doesn't exist, or as far as they know, it doesn't exist. Um, so Danzo is kind of like this mid-tone skin, and he is therefore looked down upon because it's obvious to people that his parents were from different castes. And even though he is very bright and very intelligent, and he does everything he can to kind of follow the path, he is quite rebellious in nature, and he doesn't really like to follow the rules very much. So he quite often kind of comes across as aloof, even though he doesn't intend to. And that can kind of set him apart from some of his classmates. One of his classmates is one of our other main characters, and that is Ishemi. And she is actually um, his intended as well, which means they are destined to marry one another. She would only lower herself to his level because she also has kind of a stain on her reputation. She's the daughter of a woman called Nem, and Nem is kind of considered the fixer in this world, where whatever your problem, you can go to Nem and Nem will fix it. And that kind of goes for criminal and non-criminal stuff. So Nem has like a bunch of enforcers who will do stuff for her, and she also has a lot of contacts. She's kind of like got her finger in all the pies in a way. So by association and by her family connection to Nem, Ishemi is kind of tainted as well. So that's why they are destined to be together and be intended. However, they're not super compatible. Um, Ishemi is very, very feisty. She's very determined and ruthless. And her plotline actually took a much darker turn than I expected, which I was kind of intrigued by. Um, she's very much out for herself. She's very determined, a very definite and very much knows what she wants in this world and is not going to let anyone stand in the way of it, no matter who they are. So she was an interesting character to follow as the time went on because her story kind of got darker and deeper as it goes. And then the other main character that we have is called Lilong and she is a yellow skin, which is essentially unheard of in this world. In fact, most people in this world think that yellow skins were completely wiped out. They don't believe they exist anymore. And so the fact that she is one is pretty unheard of. And the fact that she comes to their city for a mission is, again, pretty diabolically suicidal in a way. 
um, and she gets tangled up in a mess with Danzo and Ashemi and various other characters in this world. She is on the hunt for magic, which is very much her domain and not something that has been seen in the city where Danzo and Ishemi live for a long, long time, um, and it's not something that is common knowledge there. So when the magic does appear and it comes in the form of this mineral called Ebor, it is very, very rare and very crazy and sparks off all kind of political dissonance and all kinds of problems for Danzo and Ishemi alike. So it's a pretty interesting story. It's fairly fast paced. I will say overall, I felt like the pacing was good and it didn't feel slow in any places. I like the magic and I like the fact that the magic takes a toll on people. So if you do use Ebor, um, then you are very much affected by it. It takes quite a strain on the soul and the emotions and even physically. Um, so I like that element of it. There are magical creatures in this world too. So they are a part of the book as well. And generally, I think it has a good flow to it. But I think for me, my only real criticism comes from the characterization. Personally, I would have liked a little more kind of openness and connection with the characters um, for me to really get invested. And I think also this story, because it's a debut, it feels a little bit rough around the edges in places, but it doesn't feel slow and it doesn't feel bad. It's just not quite as polished as I would like it to be. So for that reason, I ended up giving it a three and a half out of five stars, which is still very much a good rating for me and still means that I really enjoyed it. But it just means there's a little bit further I think the author can go. And because this is the first in a series, I have a feeling that that is going to happen as the series goes on. So 3.5 stars from me for this one. And I'd love to know if you guys are going to pick this one up when it comes out in May. Let me know in the comments below. The next one that I want to talk about is Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. This has been on my TBR for quite a while since it first came out, um, I think a year or two ago now. And I've seen a lot of people with very divided opinions about this one. I've seen some people who absolutely loved it and then I've seen other people who couldn't get anywhere with it and found it really dull or really hard or really difficult to get into. So it's quite a divisive one from the sounds of it. Personally, I will admit I audiobooked this um, and I think that had quite an impact on how I consumed it because the audio narrator is really, really good and I really enjoyed them telling the story. I don't know if I would have enjoyed it as much had I read it because I've heard from lots of people who read the book that they didn't have that enjoyment. And I think also just kind of having it voice narrated when it's a slightly confusing setup at the beginning, which I do think it has elements of, then yeah, the narration can really help with that kind of thing. So I think that if you are an audio listener, maybe try it on audio. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. If you've read it, do you agree with that assessment? I also admit that this book is kind of different from what I would normally pick up. It's quite battle heavy and I don't tend to enjoy battle heavy books. I think um, generally I find them a little bit dry. And although this does have areas which are very battle centric and it also follows kind of different points of the plot, follow um, like a revenge quest, which feels very kind of Red Rising inspired, um, it does feel like there's enough emotion to kind of keep the reader there, or at least for me with the audiobook, I definitely felt like I had enough of an emotional connection to want to know what was going to happen next. And so even though the battle scenes are a very prominent part of the book, and it's kind of all about how these characters can defend themselves, um, it's one of those stories where we're following a lower caste um, kind of citizen called Tao, who is considered a lower, which is basically just, you know, lower class. And he is desperate to become trained up and prove himself in this world. At the very beginning, he has a great relationship with his dad and even his mum, who is slightly distanced from him because she moved out and left them. He has a good relationship with his family in general. But then his father is brutally killed in front of him, um, kind of because of him. And it completely changes his view and everything in life. And this happens very early on. And he instantly gets sucked into this revenge quest. He is determined to hunt down his father's killers. He's determined to pay them back in kind and kill them. And he can only do that if he trains in a certain way and gets to a certain level because the people who kill his father are considered nobles. And you cannot kill a noble if you are a lower than without massive repercussions, you cannot even challenge them. 
So it's definitely um, about training him up. And this book in particular feels like it's one of those beginning books where there's a lot of training montages. There's a lot of training moments, um, battles that are kind of flurries and like leading up to developing a team and a core of people who he can depend on. I liked all of that. I feel like that's the sort of fantasy that I'm very familiar with and I very much enjoy. Um, so it didn't feel super fresh, but it didn't feel boring either. It felt like even though it was stuff I'd seen before, it was done well. The world itself that this is set in has some interesting magic. Um, we're following two kind of cultures and they have been at this endless clash for a long, long time, like many generations. One of the sides of this clash is called the Omehi and the Omehi are the tribe that we're following where they have this magic where one in a certain number of their women and a certain number of their men um, is gifted and gifted for women means that they can call on demons and they can kind of infect and take over the minds of those that they are battling against with these demons or dragons. It's pretty cool power and it's pretty powerful on the enemies of the Amehi and I really enjoyed kind of getting to know that um, a little bit as the story went on. And then the other kind that men have is where they can become this kind of engorged huge beast of a man, almost like the Hulk is what I imagine, where they can just kind of hulk up and they can go completely battle crazy and yeah, take down loads of men um, much more easily than they would be otherwise. So yeah, pretty weird, crazy powers, but I like to learning about them. Tao is the main character, the one that I talked about, the lesser who is trying to kind of come up in the world. And we are following him for the whole book. He's the main character throughout. And I enjoyed his story. Um, there is a romance that I thought was handled fairly well, although I wish that the female characters had been more prominent in this book because that is my main criticism with this particular title, is that the ladies, they had amazing potential and it was kind of squashed down to show off Tao's story. And I would have liked to see more ladies doing awesome things. Um, I hope that in the second book that kind of happens a bit more. I'm currently reading the second one and I feel like it hasn't happened just yet, but maybe it's coming, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not unusual in fantasy for the women to get overlooked. And I do feel a little bit like that happened in this one. The magic of this world, as I say, it does call on demons and there is this whole demon world that you can travel to in your kind of unconscious. It very much reminded me of The Dragon Cycle, which I really loved that series by Peter B. Brett. You can see the top of one of them over there. Um, I love that series. So I think the magic in this definitely has elements of that. And I really like that. I also think I mentioned before, it's kind of this revenge quest, which again, feels like it is taking inspiration from things like Red Rising. So again, I think if you like either of those things kind of combined, this is definitely elements of that. I also definitely enjoyed the kind of brotherhood vibes that Tao and his various brothers who he meets along the way and trains with kind of give off at the end. I feel like they're really a strong tight-knit group by the end which I was really enjoying seeing. And overall I gave it a solid three out of five stars. I definitely wanted to continue on with the series because it was left on a very dramatic kind of cliffhanger and I have picked up the second on audio, which I'm now listening to, as I say. So I will be reviewing the second one probably at some point soon. Um, so far, I'm enjoying that one as well. But I'm just, I just want the ladies to kind of come through and be awesome. So fingers crossed. But yeah, let me know what you thought of this if you've read it. And the final one that I want to talk about in this review is one that I was sent by the author. It's actually a self-published book and it's huge. So I might struggle holding it up for the whole time. It's called Dreams of the Dying and it's by Nicholas Leitzau or Late Zoo. Um, I was sent this by the author for a review and I'm so glad I was because it is such an interesting story and very different to a lot of stuff that I've read. Um, yeah, I'm gonna dive straight into this one because it's it's chunky and it took me a while to read mainly because it's a hardback and it's a heavy hardback but it's so worth getting the hardback or at least the physical edition because at the end of the book, I think I showed this when I hauled it, there's all these pages which um, are like this bestiary, there's essays, there's all sorts of illustrations of like diary extracts. It's just loads of cool stuff at the end of the book which is so immersive and kind of really fleshes out the book as a whole and makes you feel like it's come from a real world and it's come from a real place. And actually this book is inspired by a video game, um, which I think is called Enderal. 
something like that. And I've not played the video game, but apparently there is quite a following. And if you have played it, then maybe you'll be really interested in this because it follows um, one area of that world and a particular character in that world as well. So it's pretty interesting as a story, even if you haven't played the game. Um, but if you have, I imagine it gives you even more enjoyment. I will say straight away, um, trigger warnings for suicide and for body horror. A couple of gruesome squeamish bits in this one, but that was fine with me. As I said, the production value on this is insane. The author has not gone to any, like, not spared any expense with this. They have really done a fantastic job. The quality of this book is so, so top notch. It's much nicer than many of the books that I get from publishers, um, either free or like even finished editions. I just, I think this is far superior and clearly the author has spent a fair bit of time and money and effort on the production value, which I highly appreciate. The story itself is a pretty twisty one. We're following a main character called Jesper, who is definitely the main character for the whole book, although a couple of other main characters kind of creep in around him. But he's our main character and he is someone who is suffering from essentially depression. Um, he suffers from melancholia is what they call it in the book. But yeah, it's essentially kind of a depressive state um, where he is haunted by the trauma of his past. He's had quite a tumultuous past, both with his family and then also with kind of the things he's seen and done in the line of service and just throughout his life. So he is haunted constantly by nightmares um, and just generally day to day he finds it very difficult sometimes to motivate himself and get up and do things and a lot of that comes from this mental illness um, this exploration of kind of melancholia and depression and all of that kind of stuff. So I do think this book handles that element and the kind of philosophical mental health side of things really well. It definitely dives deep into humanity and the way that humanity can twist and warp people and make people believe things about themselves that aren't true or make things happen in your life that you didn't expect. And it's all this really interesting kind of deep dive into what causes people to feel this way and how we can kind of try and drag ourselves out but then something happens and drags you back and it's kind of this eternal battle with mental health and kind of how you feel and how you process and deal with things. So I really enjoyed all of that exploration. I thought that was really fantastic and that's a massive theme throughout the whole book, um, not just with Jesper, but especially with him. We're following a couple of different plot lines. So we're following the present day plot line of Jesper, but then we also get quite a few flashbacks into his past so we can see a bit more about how he got to be the way he is. And we also learn a little bit about some other characters through interludes and flashbacks to their lives as well. Dreaming and nightmares are a huge part of this story, as you can probably guess from the title. But dreaming is a very prevalent part of the book. And actually, the main plot of it is that one of the rulers of this world has fallen into a deep coma. And he is, for some reason, trapped in this coma and people don't know why. But the people around him are trying to hide it and keep it secret, because if the world knew that he'd got trapped in a coma then everything would go up in uproar so Jesper is one of the few people who is hired to try and find out what is wrong with this noble and to uncover exactly what the issue is and it's all to do with dreaming and nightmares um, and so they end up going into dreams and into nightmares quite a lot in this book and we also see Jesper's own dreams and nightmares as well so dreaming is very much part of it. Um, dreaming and reality are kind of blurred in this world. So you can walk in dreams if you're a dream walker and you can bring people with you to dreams and nightmares. And that obviously has quite a toll on like mental health as well. So yeah, there's a lot of really interesting kind of ideas and elements that the author is playing with here. And I really liked seeing the dreaming and the kind of crazy ideas of the dream world and the very dark places that the author was willing to go to and take us to. Again, my only real quibble with this book is very much the same quibble that I have with Rage of Dragons, where I personally wish that there were more lady characters who played a big part and played a kind of substantial role. I think there are potential moments of like good relationships with the women and good moments where they could have really shone, but the author chooses not to make them shine. And I actually had a conversation with the author where he said it's very much intentional that this part of the world is very male dominated. However, I just personally, I always find this criticism with books that are very male heavy 
I wish the ladies had more of a part and I think in this one particularly the ladies quite often get brushed over or kind of hard done by by the men around them and they're like often cheated on and things like that so it's pretty rough going if you're a lady in this particular part of the world from the sounds of it um, and I would have liked to just see more hopeful stories or more kind of empowered stories of women in this world but I understand that the author was going for a very male dominated society so I can kind of get it I just wish it was more equal um but yeah I mean generally I really enjoyed it and I definitely think that the production value alone is worth buying the book and then the story itself really elevated that as well and I did have a great time reading it even though it took me quite a while to kind of get through it just because it is such a chunky book but I ended up buying it on Kindle as well and I would say for ease of reading the kindle works really well because it's not holding up this massive heavy book but then you don't get all the amazing stuff of the kindle version that you get in the hardback or paperback physical edition so it's up to you which one you want to buy um but i really recommend the hardback or paperback so you get like this lovely awesome bonus material at the end so yeah i gave this one four out of five stars i'm certainly intrigued enough to continue on with the series apparently there is a sequel coming and I'm not sure when it's going to be out, but I'm definitely intrigued enough to want to know more. And I certainly think it's a um, great starting point from this author and really excited and happy that they sent it to me for review. So thank you for that. I'd love to know if you are going to pick this one up, what you think of it. I've heard so many people talking about this since um, Petrick read it very recently. And obviously I'm reading it now and reviewing it. So hopefully more of you will pick it up. But it seems like it's had a little bit of a hype train going on. So if you want to join on that and you want to pick it up, then always supporting self-published authors is great. And one who has put this much effort and time into their book and their production is so worth supporting. So please do go and check it out and I will try and find a link where you can buy it below. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this and the other two books that I've mentioned if you've read any of them. And I will chat to you very soon in another video. Bye guys. Thank you for watching my video today Go pick up a book Then come back and chat with me again